before we've been doing it. But okay. okay. Uh, I'd like to take this moment to introduce uh, Chris Schmidt. Uh, Chris, Chris is a uh, software engineer for Service Magic in Golden. And uh, the big thing that Chris is here to talk about is the OWASP Enterprise Security API. He's the owner of the uh, OWASP ES API for Java. So um, I'll turn it over to Chris, and uh, thanks for coming. Thanks. So I'm actually not the owner of the Java. I am owner of JavaScript, which is a baby project. I, I am one of the core contributors and one of the architects on the Java projects. So that's what I'm mainly going to be talking about today is the uh, SAPI for Java project and kind of some of the things I want to go over are, you know, there's a, there's a lot of information out there about what the SAPI is um, and what it can do, but not a whole lot of information on how to actually use it. So kind of my goal here today is I want to go over some of the ways that you can actually fix some real world security issues using um, the SAPI and uh, kind of go over the importance of where the ASAPI fits into, uh, into your software development lifecycle and where, uh, you know, where it can be used to uh, make your software better. So just a little bit, a little bit about me. Um, you know, everybody always puts their long list of credentials up there. So I've been, uh, I've been in IT for, for over half of my life, technically. Um, I started out in hardware, and uh, as such, when I made the uh, change about five years ago into professional software development, uh, it kind of gave me a unique perspective on writing software and, uh, more importantly than that, debugging software. Uh, anybody who's worked extensively with hardware, especially peripherals, things like printers, where you're not necessarily always dealing with um, electronic components, you tend to develop an entirely different way of uh, approaching problems. Aside from that, I am a software engineer, as, as was mentioned, I'm a software engineer and the uh, quote unquote security guy for Service Magic. Um, it's an interesting position to be in, being both the security guy and a developer. Um, you know, basically the only person I ever get to fight with is myself which uh, leads to some interesting cubicle conversations. I'm also, as I mentioned, one of the core contributors on the Asapi for Java project, um, as well as the owner of the JavaScript project. Um, I also am in the process of starting my first book, um, which is going to be on this very subject. So here's some of the things I'm going to go over. Um, First of all, pretty important to define what exactly an ESAPI is. And you notice I'm saying an ESAPI, not the ESAPI. Um, I'm also going to go over where it fits into your software development lifecycle and uh, kind of go over what a secure, reset, secure request lifecycle should look like. Then we'll get into some fun coding demos, and I'll show you how to actually integrate any SAPI into your project, configure it, how to use the reference implementations that we provide, or how to uh, adapt existing API calls into your uh, existing security libraries. That is Framework X. Framework X could be Spring Security, it could be Jazz, it could be um, you know, a, number of, a number of security toolkits that are available. So first, let's define what exactly an enterprise security API is. That was an interesting animation. This is kind of an overview of the ISAPI project, and more than that, the ISAPI community on the OWASP site. Um, historically, a lot of the OWASP site is very, very geared towards security professionals. There's a lot of resources out there for developers, but um, 90% of the people that go to OWASP are security people. Um, I think part of the goal of the ASAPI community is to change that and bring developers into the security community, which I think is pretty important. So under the ASAPI community umbrella, we've got a bunch of mailing lists, we've got the wiki, of course, and then we've got the uh, kind of flagship 
thing that is the ASAPI, which is the development library. Development library is available for lots of languages now, and that list continues to grow. I believe somebody just started a Ruby project last week. Um, also new is the concept of platform security APIs. Um, the first person to kind of do this, or first group, was Salesforce, which if you go to the ASAPI uh, wiki page now, you'll see that there is a tab there for force.com, and so it's kind of a new, interesting direction we're going. These are, these are the things that basically define what an ASAPI is. Number one, it's a high-level API. Um, you know, there's lots of security toolkits out there. There's calls you make to do logging. There's libraries you use to do authentication and access control. There's libraries you use to do encryption. The goal of the ASAPI is to bring all of those together and provide one kind of central API where you go to use those things. Um, it allows the developers to focus on writing the code, not writing the security. The security is written, and it's used by the developers. Um, it complements a secure software development environment and secure coding standards. Um, are, how many of you are actually developers? Do you guys have secure coding standards in your workplace? So, so not a whole lot. Um, trust me, I, I feel your pain. Um, and then the last point here is that it enforces a common API through interfaces, but also allows customization or extension to adapt to specific environments. That's pretty important because you know what works for me at Service Magic is probably not going to work for you guys. Um, you know, my technology stack is not going to be the same as everybody's technology stack in the world. So this is probably what your application looks like without the SAPI. You've got all these security, layer, security controls out there. You call them individually. When you add the API, everything comes through this service layer. Pretty self-explanatory graphic. Um, a biggie that always comes up when I'm talking to people about the ASAPI is, well, what about the OWASP top 10? Well, what about it? Um, there is a control in ASAPI that addresses each one of the top 10 distinctively, but that's not really what the ASAPI was written around and architected for. It was arch architected to provide security to your enterprise application. This is kind of a neat little scorecard graphic that we came up with that shows just the status of all the different implementations of ASAPI. Obviously, Java is the kind of uh, driving force behind all these other implementations. Um, .NET is a close follower. And then, you know, down to the newest ones like Haskell and JavaScript. Uh, this just outlines kind of what security controls that are part of the API are implemented in each one of the different uh, language implementations of the ASAPI. So, how many people in here are familiar with this diagram? Anybody? It's the uh, software development life cycle. This thing is probably older than all of us put together. However, it still is pretty much in use in even agile environments as a graphic that represents, this is what software design looks like. This is the steps that you go through. So where does security, and more importantly, where does the ASAPI fit into this software de development lifecycle? Everywhere. Security is important at each one of these steps. Um, when you're architecting and designing your application, you want to be thinking about what kind of controls are required for the component that you're working on. When you're writing the application, you need to be thinking about things like output encoding and validation. When you are maintaining, chances are you're going to spend some time maintaining or fixing security bugs. So obviously there again, a SAPI comes into play there. It should take place in every one of these phases.
Secure development life cycle, or I'm sorry, secure request life cycle.